chill computer guy here. I wanted to give everybody an update on the computer build. Now, if you saw my last video, I kind of described my old system, and then I described the new system, what I was kind of going for, what I was basically laying out. Now, you got to remember that I was kind of on a budget with this computer build, and so what I wanted to do is try to sell stuff via eBay, sell my old system, take that money, and invest that into the new system. Now, originally for the case, I was going to have the Corsair 100R. Now I purchased this case and after receiving it, taking it out of the box and kind of like doing a general mock-up of the new build, I realized that this isn't the right case for me. First off, there was a major, major issue with the intake. Now the front panel of the case is a solid plastic panel and there were a few little slots on the side for intake, but there just wasn't enough air coming into the case the way it was designed. Therefore, for that reason, I figured it would just kind of create like a heat trap. Now, you got to remember that with this particular computer, I'm going to be rendering out uh, timelines in Premiere Pro. So I may be putting the CPU at 100% for 20, 30 minutes at a time. So there is going to be heat issue there. So because of the lack of intake on the front of this case, now not only that, but the, uh, the motherboard mount and the actual back panel of the case was only about a quarter inch. It was really, really not enough room to really do my cable management the way I really wanted to do it. Not only that, but my power supply is built for a full-size tower. This was a mid-tower, so I'm gonna have some extra length to those cables, and so I'm gonna have to tuck them away somewhere. And so basically, after putting the case on the workbench, kind of doing a general mock-up of the new design, I realized this case is not gonna work for me. But I learned a very valuable lesson here because I ended up having to return the case and, um, they charged like a $17 shipping fee, which was non-refundable. So I ended up getting like, you know, 20 some odd dollars back. So, so I lost some money on that, but that is me being indecisive about how I wanted to do the build. And for that reason, it did cost me some money. Now, moving on to the CPU, um, I wanted to go with, uh, like I say, I was on a budget here. My original intention was the i5-3570. Now, I actually ordered that processor on eBay and I got a really good deal on it. It was like 65 bucks. I mean, super good deal. I got the processor, it came to the house, I was holding it in my hand and it had some weight to it. You know, I just love, I love holding a processor. You know, it came in that little plastic clamshell and I'm just kind of holding on to this thing. And it's always my belief that if you're a builder, you should get the best possible processor for your motherboard. And this i5 was not it. Put this entire build together, I'm going to be unhappy because I got an i5 and not an i7. Now I have four cores, both have four cores, but I have eight cores of multi-threading with an i7. No multi-threading with the i5. And like I say, I'm going to be rendering uh, Premiere Pro timelines up to 20, 30 minutes at a time. Any amount of time I can cut down on rendering time is a big, big win for me. Therefore, I decided that I was going to return the i5 and get the i7-3770. Now, the best possible processor I can get for that motherboard is the 3770K. The K is for unlock. The K is for if you're going to overclock. And that basically adds $100 to the price tag of the processor. I'm not interested in overclocking. I don't want to do that. I just want like a nice, solid system that I can render out stuff in a fairly reasonable amount of time. I feel like uh, you should put the best processor possible uh, in the motherboard that you're building around. So not only that, but there was a RAM issue. I had my, uh, my Corsair 1600, 16 gigs of RAM here. I started pulling it out of the computer, started cleaning everything off here. And as you can see here, these were originally all the uh, parts that I was gonna put into the new system. I decided not to do that, um, mainly with the RAM. I didn't wanna go with 16 gigs of RAM. I wanted to bump it up to 32 gigs of RAM. And I figured the, the RAM that I had, I could probably sell on eBay, maybe get a hundred bucks for it. Take that money, put a little bit of extra money with it and get uh, 32 gigs of RAM. And so that's what I did. Again, I felt like I was gonna be much, much happier in the long run if I did uh, double up my RAM. I mean, the thing is, like I say, the original build was in 2011. This is now 2018. I wanted to do a, a fairly solid upgrade. And so doubling my RAM, um, was a was a huge decision uh, that cost a little extra money, but again, I was able to sell a lot of. I was able to sell my old motherboard for for like uh, 90 bucks. I was able to sell my old RAM for 100 bucks. You know, so I was able to sell a lot of the old parts of my old computer. Take that money and invest that into the new computer, and upgrading to 32 gigs of RAM was definitely part of that. 
Now, not only that, but uh, through research, I come to find out the Premiere Pro in its latest uh, update dropped support for the CUDA technology, dropped support for my graphics card, which was the NVIDIA GTX um, 470. I come to find out that all the 400 series cards they dropped support for in the latest uh, Premiere Pro update. Um, once I found that out, I started to look at the cards that were still supported. I believe it's the 600 series up through finding a, the proper price point decided to go with the NVIDIA GTX 770. Um, this graphics card, I was uh, put it on my, uh, my search list, my eBay search list. In other words, it, as these products become available on eBay, I instantly get an email. The idea of doing that is a lot of people will put things on eBay not realizing what the top dollar for that product is. And if you constantly get uh, notifications via the email, you can kind of have first uh, grabs at that item. And the GTX 770 by NVIDIA was that a perfect example of that. Um, these cards were going for anywhere from $150 to $200 for the good condition ones. Uh, I got an email saying a brand new listing comes up for the NVIDIA GTX 770. It was 113 bucks plus $17 shipping. That's about 130 bucks. And the card looked looked brand new. It was minty, had no dust on it. No, I mean it was a very very beautiful looking card. And the person selling it had had enough. To, didn't have a lot of transactions, but they had enough transactions. They had 100% positive feedback. And their description of the card and their pictures of the card, I felt very confident about purchasing this uh, used graphic card via eBay. Um, but like I say, I sold my old graphics card. I think I only got 40 bucks for it. I didn't realize the GTX uh, 470 had gone down in value so much. Now this was originally like a you know a 250, 300 dollar card, but you can get these things on eBay all day long for less than 50 bucks. So. I did upgrade the graphics card to the GTX 770, which again, I felt very, very good about, mainly because I was able to have that CUDA support uh, via the Premiere Pro, and so I was able to uh, use that again. Now, not only that, but the internal um, storage, I kept my two, my, uh, my terabyte, I have two two terabyte hard drives, which I use for archives and backup. Now, and then of course my DVD drive, but as far as my main drives, my main drives that I'm gonna use every day, I have my data drive, which is a 500 gig solid state drive by Samsung, I kept that. And then also uh, my 180 gig SSD by Intel. That is my systems drive. That's gonna have my windows and all my programs on it. Uh, basically gonna have all the functional material of the system. Now I think it's very important to have your windows and your programs on a separate hard drive than your data and also i think it's important to have a scratch drive um, when like uh, i mainly built this system for premiere pro for video editing um, i wanted something that was fast that would play 1080 fluently with effects you know maybe not like you know uh, boris continuum complete effects you know too many effects i realize i'm gonna have to render that out you know there's tons of plugins that use the cuda rendering engine and to have those play fluently is very, very nice. I noticed there was some jaggedness going with the, the GTX 470. That's why I find out, that, come to find out that they're not supporting that card anymore. So with this new build, Premiere Pro is running unbelievably good. I was able to take a 1080 video and duplicate it four times and put uh, upper right upper left, lower left, lower right, and play all four of those fluently, put it in a loop, and then the first time around it's a little choppy because what it's doing is it's, it's rendering those, or it's not rendering them, but it's caching those files out into the scratch disk. Once it goes around once, the second, the third, it plays completely fluently, and that's with uh, four 1080 uh, uh, shots all playing simultaneously with the uh, with the uh, Lemaitre color also on there. So there are some effects on there and it plays fluently, which is great, you know. Um, now one more addition that I did do to this particular build is uh, the MVME uh, 960 EVO. This is the M.2 drive and I just discovered this during this build 
And originally I was going to put uh, my system and all my programs on this drive, but I was having a little bit of an issue in the BIOS, finding a way to boot onto the M.2 drive. And so what I did is I decided to just make it my scratch disk. It's a 250 gig drive. I got a really good deal on it. And what this does is this plugs right into the, uh, the PCIe uh, 2.0 slot, uh, X4. And so it plugs right into there and then you put the uh, M.2 which is basically a, just a different form factor of a solid state drive. So the M.2 is my scratch disk, and then I have the 500 gig Samsung for my data, and then the 180 uh, Intel uh, for all my programs and uh, my system, my Windows 10 install. Not only that, but I had to get a license, uh, a Windows 10 license, which I did that. I did the system builder license, uh, which I was $30 cheaper. And that's fine because basically with, with the system builder license is your key is hooked to your motherboard. In other words, if you go with a different motherboard, you're going to have to have a different license. Now, with the full version, you can remove the license from the motherboard. And uh, so that's, that's really the only difference. But I figure with the system builder license, I'm committed to this, this uh, motherboard for a while. Um, you know, the motherboard, I'm very happy with it. It has enough expansion slots. It has, you know, it has the SATA 6 gig it has the uh you know the usb3 it has it has all the stuff i need uh for the next you know five six seven eight ten years whatever you know i don't know when i'm gonna have money again to upgrade but i'm hoping that this this computer is gonna gonna hold me for a good 10 years it's gonna be what i need and will be a solid workhorse for the next 10 years um now, I have a short video of me tearing it down and putting it up. It's heavily edited in Premiere Pro. I didn't want to put a lot of time and energy into this. I mainly uh, wanted to get this thing built, have a brief dis discussion about it, uh, make this video here, and then get kind of back to, uh, you know, the, uh, the screencasts and the uh, other vlog type things. Now, this channel, I want it to, I want it to change a little bit. I want, to, I want to add some more content to it. I want to do different things. I'm still going to do screencasts of Reason and Bitwig Studio, but I'm also going to do kind of around the house vlog type things. Uh, random shit. I might even show some classic films on here. Oh, another thing, uh, the cooling. Now, the cooling, the CPU cooler, boy, I had issues with that. Um, again, I wanted this to be able to render video for 20, 30 minutes solid, so I knew that heat was going to be an issue with this build, and so the CPU cooler was kind of a big deal. Now, I originally went with the Arctic Cooling AP112, and uh, I installed that onto the CPU, and my RAM was going to hit the fan. This is a huge issue with CPU coolers. CPU coolers and RAM can be an issue, can be a compatibility issue. Um, with this particular machine, I went ahead and went with the water cooler. I've always kind of not been into water coolers. I've always like, I just wasn't into water coolers. I'm, always, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big fanboy of the fanboys. I'm a, I'm a fan, I'm a fan of of a decent CPU cooler. I found this uh, Arctic Cooling, I think it was the AP112. Now if I had the normal RAM, the low form factor RAM, I could have definitely tucked it in under the fan, but because my RAM had already arrived and I got a really good deal on it, I know that, uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna start looking for different form factor RAM because my RAM is already there and I got a good deal on it. I'm happy with the RAM. And so I realized that I'm gonna have to, uh, to get rid of my CPU cooler. It's just not gonna work for the build because CPU coolers and RAM, there's always been a compatibility issue during a build. Um, especially with some of this, some of this RAM, like the Corsair RAM I got, it's, it's really, really tall RAM. It's very, very tall. Um, the RAM, my other Corsair 1600 that I got rid of was, was like half the height and that would have fit under that fan perfectly. But uh, because of this, I had to uh, switch CPU coolers and that's when I started to do some research on water cooling. And so I really, really liked the, the Arctic. And so I went with this guy. This is the, uh, this is the Arctic, or this is the uh, Liquid Freezer 120. Now this is a big, fat uh, radiator. It's got an intake and an exhaust fan, and it's got this really thick radiator. And so this thing is giant. And so I was concerned about this fitting where I wanted it to go. 
Um, but it got really good reviews, and I just, like I said, I really like this company. I like the build quality of their coolers. So I went with this cooler, crossed my fingers. I knew there was going to be some mock-up involved. We got the motherboard in. We have just this screw here in the corner in, and this screw right here. We basically have it tacked in, and we also put this screw in. Um, we got the uh, RAM in there, and we had the auto cooler, or the uh, radiator, uh, mounted to the CPU. Um, the whole idea of doing this is I did several mock-ups because there's several directions you can put the radiator in. There's, you know, different directions you can face the radiator tubing. Does it go to the left, to the right, to the inside, to the bottom, to the top? And I have come up with what I think is the best possible configuration. Every, uh, every case is going to be different on this. And every motherboard, every fan setup, this is a huge, a huge, huge amount of variance going on here. But this, with this particular case, I uh, basically, before I even put the motherboard in, I got the radiator out and kind of like, uh, like I say, mocked it up with one or two screws, kind of tacked it into place and saw how everything would work best. And this is how it's going to work best. This is a very, very thick radiator. And not only that, but it has an in and out take. It's going to have a fan on each side. So this radiator is going to stick out pretty far. But with my mock-up, I have decided that that's not going to be an issue. Also, the header of the radiator, you see it's much wider at the top. That's going to face up. I can do that, and it'll clear my fans. It's going to look good. If it faces down, it may hit my graphic card. So that's another huge thing. So we'll go ahead and tack that in, and then we'll do some more. Uh... Okay, so now there we are. We have the radiator tacked down to the back here. And I only have a couple screws in there. I just basically tacked it down with two screws to kind of see, get a sense of is it, if this is going to work. Now you can see it's awfully tied up at the top of the case, but you can see that this fan is going to be very fluent and that's going to create an a, uh, exhaust from the bottom of the case, which will kind of nicely uh, scrape against my uh, video card. It'll give it some nice airflow there. Also you can see that because I faced the uh, inlet and outlet to the back of the case, you end up with a nice little S-curve if I were to go the other way, it, it just these things would have been kind of cockeyed and kind of odd. I just this is the way that I've decided to do it. You have a nice little S curve in here. Nothing's kinked, nothing's crimped, and uh, I think it has a good look to it. So next up, we got to put the front fan on and uh, finish screwing that. And as you can see, there was indeed here. Um, but then once the cooler was installed. And uh, it just, it fit perfectly and it just made the whole case feel more open. Now, another thing that I did is I went with my original case, my Cooler Master CM692. And what I did is the lower drive bays, I completely removed those. So as you can see, there's a real, real clear um, um, passage of air through this case. You can see the intake fan there. I also put an intake on the bottom. And with this case, it has big rubber feet on it. Not only that, but I put some additional puffies on those feet. So the 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 case is basically almost uh, you know inch and a half, two inches above the desk. Now, I don't recommend putting a fan in the bottom of your case if you're gonna set this on the floor or the carpet, but this case is gonna be on a desk, on a secure, not a desk, but a table next to the desk. And so, since we're gonna elevate it, I think that putting that fan in the bottom 
uh, as an intake and then also on the front of the case is really going to give it some nice airflow and then it's going to go through the uh, top of the case we have exhaust in the top of the case and we also have exhaust through the CPU uh, radiator out of the back of the case so I felt very very confident about the temperature internal temperature of this case and uh, after putting everything together oh it was scary I clicked the power button and sure enough everything powered up it went perfect we went into the BIOS we made some adjustments and we might actually do a video on adjusting the BIOS of this particular computer let me know down below if you would like to see a video on that um, but I, I went into Premiere Pro I started working I rendered I rendered out a couple of timelines I'll show you what we're doing we're rendering out in uh, we're rendering out this file here in the uh, media encoder um, and let's take a look here so we got the GPU it's at 100% this thing's full this thing's been going for a while now um, you can see our memory we're up to about uh, we got a bunch of programs open we got the OBS we got the Photoshop we got tons of things open so uh, and then the GPU right here now this is kicked up all of a sudden this is kicked way up this was at 20% now it's sitting at 50% so you can see the GPU is at 44% right here so the GPU is at 44% here CPU is at 100% we're at 42% so we got we're using 13.5 gigs of memory but here's the thing we got a bunch of shit open we got like uh, we got Photoshop open we got propeller head reason we got Bitwix we got a bunch of crap open and so that's why we got the OBS we're rocking the OBS and um, yeah as you can see our CPU is at 100% what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run the uh, temp there's that so you can see the CPUs run at 100% the uh, graphics cards running at 46% there's our temps you know um, our max temp has been lower than yeah lower than 50 degrees and this render has been going on for I don't know I'd say about uh, 10 minutes it's a really long long I wanted to do a real long render this has been rendering for 10 minutes and it's almost done the thing is is it's hard to it's so fast that it's hard to find something that renders I mean I'll, if I put an actual full-length project in here and render it I'll be sure to do this test again but the new builds looking good it looks looking like I'm not having any heat issues you know because like I say look at the CPU right here it's at 100% you know you know look at that thing that thing's not and it's not bouncing around at 99% it's 100% straight up 100% right there and uh, like I say we've been rendering for a little bit and uh, those are our temps so that's looking really good looking like a solid build again that's testament to the cooler how good the cooler is um, but yeah really really quite happy with this build and uh, yeah my render times are way faster um, and I I probably got 300 bucks into this I made 500 on eBay and put another 300 in and this is a good system right here this is a rocking system I'm really happy with it anyway chill computer guy if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel give me a thumbs up let me know what's going on in your world let me know what you want to see down below we're gonna have more music tutorials coming up eventually I'm just getting kind of burnt out on music tutorials right now so I'm just doing like this you know this computer build uh, I'm gonna have a film coming out on that it's just I, I'm not getting into cutting it up it's just tons of footage and I'm not really I'm not sold on on the project oh there we are we're done see we're dropping down now there comes our CPU down there it is we're done look at that